Welcome to All Brands After Hours with me, Courtney Dowlett. Welcome to the show. We usually hang out and craft together. However, today we'll be going over Brother Canvas Workspace. So offset, offset's really neat because offset is, okay, I want you to cut this out, but I don't want you to cut it right on the line. So like our designer here, I don't want you to cut it right on this line. I want you to give it a little bit of spacing. So around it. So say this is our cut line. Well, it's going to cut out here. Why is that helpful? So say I'm doing um, some fussy cutting on a fabric that I like and it's this design. Well, I like the color that the fabric is, not just the picture image. I want to show a bit of it. I want to make it almost look like a sticker with a border. Well, I can tell it, hey, can you make it actually offset by this much percent, or this much percent? And that way I can see it. And you can offset on the outside or you can offset on the inside, which I think is a really, really cool feature that Canvas has. So I could cut within the image if I wanted to do that. Um, you could tell it, hey, when you're coming around to an edge right here, can you round it out for me? Or can you, if I'm going to show this better on here, or can you make it a beveled edge? So we'll say it's going to be a part of a quilt block. Well, having that beveled edge is going to make it so much neater and um, not so much bulk when I'm piecing together. So having that feature, I appreciate. So uh, select original line. So if we leave it as it is, delete it, set to a drawing line. So instead of a cut line, we can make it a drawing line. So we remember that feature from over here. So I'm going to leave it as is. But if I wanted to delete it, I could delete it, the original line or that, you know, that I didn't just make. Or I could set it as a drawing line. So if I didn't want to cut any of this and I wanted it to just draw it, I could do that. Um, but again, I could delete it and it's not going to cut out anything inside. It's only going to cut the outside. But right now it's showing all the lines. So create an offset line only around the outer edge. If I unselected that, well, that inner bit, it's now going to select. So gives you that option. All right. Ooh, look at that. <laughs> it made a really pretty offset. That looks so cool. Very grunge. All righty. So let's go to the next angle layers. Layers is really cool. So now how we just made two different parts, that offset line and that inset line, those are two different ones because they're not welded together right now. They're not, not joined as one piece. So it's currently seeing them as divided. So right now, these are two individual pieces. Um, and I can tell it, hey, I want this one to be a cut or a draw, but I want to make this one a different one. So I have that option. I don't want to see this one. I want it to go away. Well, then I can click on this little eye right here. Well, this one right here, I want to lock it. So then that way, no one can do anything to it. You can't move it. You can't do anything to it. Um, same thing for this. I could lock this one. So say I'm done and I think that the setup that I did, my spacing's good. Everything's good. I don't want anyone to mess with it while I'm doing something else on the same mat. Then I could lock it. So it's nice to have that feature. If I want to be able to do something, say it's pretty large, but I know I'm going to shrink it down. Well, I can make something, you know, go invisible so I can see it a little bit better and edit it a little bit better without something else in the way. So layers are really cool to be able to see it like that. Alrighty, last one right here. We've got the artboard. The artboard is the actual board that you're working on. So say let's zoom out. So this right here. Okay, well, currently it's set as a 12 by 12. So like my 12 by 12 mat. But what if I wanted it to look like my 12 by 24 mat? Well, now there we go. I can see it as a 12 by 20 format. So that way, if I'm designing something, I want to make sure it's going to fit correctly on my mat. So if you see right here, these little red, this little red dot right here, that is no man's land. So I don't want to put anything outside of that because it's not going to fit on my mat. So I know to keep it inside of my mat. Um, and of course, the little squares inside of here are just like the squares on your mat. They're one inch, uh, one inch squares. So Speaking of inches, the ruler, I could change it to be millimeters if I wanted it to be millimeters, or inches if I wanted it to be inches. And you're like, Courtney, what ruler? Is it the squares? No. You can hit right here and show a ruler so it shows it up here. If you're familiar with any of your editing softwares, same concept. It's showing a ruler starts zero, starts right here on the edge of the mat, and goes all the way to the 12. If we had the 12 by 20 format, well, then the ruler is now going to go all the way down and all the way to the side, which is really cool. So I actually usually keep the roller on. I don't know why it's off. 
All right, so back to my 12 by 24, just so I can zoom in a little bit better. So your view, if I decide, you know what, it's kind of cool that it looks like a map, but I don't want to be distracted from that right now. Well, I can select this and it's going to take my mat away. So now all it is, is my editing area. And it's going to keep it where your mat is. So you still see your red marks around. You still know where no man's land is, um, but you just don't see the mat. Now, if I'm like, you know what, I don't want to see any of that. I don't want to see my mat. I don't want to see my grid. Well, I can unselect my grid, and now it's just a white space that I'm working in if I wanted to do that. So if I want to put them back. All right, Snap to Grid is pretty cool. So Snap to Grid makes the any image on here want to automatically come to one of the grid marks on here. So say I had this image right here, and I Snap to Grid. Well, it's going to want to automatically snap to the grid mark. It's now automatically wanting to snap and go to wherever the grid mark is. See how I'm clicking it? Well, if I'm just kind of clicking it around, it's automatically wanting it to go to there. So if I said, so if I had the square right here and I just kind of threw it and picked it, I'm not really putting it exactly where I want to, but it's automatically wanting to go to where those grid marks is, those grid marks are. So if I'm selecting this and I'm kind of just if you notice it's kind of just automatically going into those spots so I'm not telling it to I'm just kind of hovering and putting in different spots but that's where it wants to go it does not want to go to a halfway mark I cannot make it go to a halfway mark it's going to go straight to wherever those grid marks are if I unselected that and now moved it around well let's see if it, how it moves around easily I could go to a halfway mark on the grid um, but I can't whenever it snaps the grid all right, spacing, grid spacing. So if I want to make it bigger than an inch, which I don't know why you would want to, but if you wanted to make it bigger than an inch, you now could. Um, I like to keep mine a customary inch because that's what my mat looks like. But if you wanted it to look a little um, bigger or smaller, say that's how you're measuring something out, well, then you have that option to do it. Whew. All right. <laughs> We've gone over quite a lot. Um, there are, of course, more if you want to select your editing features here, duplicates and copies and cuts and stuff like that. File if you want to have a new one, open. These are kind of like your customary ones you're used to. Undo, like have we have undo here. If you want to cut, copy, duplicate, fill page, um, stuff like that. Um, we're kind of all familiar with, or usually you're familiar with, um, with these different ones but like how we have the edit one we have the edit here how we have the layer page we have the layer page here how we have our display where we can zoom in zoom out and all of that we also have it here um and you can ha hide your mat image like how you can do it over here so it's kind of these tools right here are kind of the ones you already have on your edit screen um now say if i click that over there and i'm like wait i want it back then i can come here show mat image so same concept these are pretty much what you already have here, but I, I don't really know anyone that prefers to use these, but you have that option if you want that option. On your layers, you can, of course, change what layer's on top. So you remember how we were uh, doing this with process overlay, uh, and we were wielding different ones, and different parts of our heart were being, I'm sorry, our star were being eaten away, and heart being eaten away. Well, we can decide which one's going to be on top. So Whatever is on top is what's going to stay. So say, okay, currently this one, if we come to our layers, this particular part of our heart is on top um, of the other one. So if I was to come here and select them both and tell it to uh, subtract, well, the one that's on top is going to be the one that goes away, not the one on the bottom. The one on the bottom is going to be the one that stays. So let's go back and let's reverse that. Let's put that top one, I'm just gonna dra uh, click it and drag it to the bottom. Now, if we were to come over here and tell it to do the exact same thing when we selected both, divide, that one went away. So kind of a different, <laughs> poor little heart. <laughs> kind of something to remember when you are using that divide feature like that, um, that's when your layers are super important because that's going to be the one that's going to go or not go. So, okay, so let's do text. So text right here, if I were to bring in the word hello. So if I was to bring in this one, I'm going to change her font to something a little bit easier for us to see. There we go, hello. So right now she is a font. We brought that in. Well, I could tell it converted to a shape, and now she has the same properties like a shape would, and I could do anything with this hello 
this font that I could with a shape. Now I can't change my font anymore because now she is a shape, um, but I could do anything else. So if I brought it here, selected both of these, like, oh, let's select both, there we go. Then I could have it weld or anything, just like any other shape would be. Something really cool I want to show real fast, and we could go into a giant deep dive on this, but I just want to do it real fast, is if you have a thing like this, hello, and I double click this, like this, if you notice all these little circles come up, well, these are the access points of the of that each one of these little bits. If I was to select this one and move it down here, well, now look, I've extended that. So I've now extended that out. And this is where you can go into very fine detail on whatever it is that you have. So say this right here. I could now very much go into detail on this and extend this out. I mean, I could go every little point. Now, if it's a straight line, um, you'll notice that it doesn't have as many points. It kind of just goes straight, straight, straight because there's not much you can do. But on the curved parts on it, there's tons of little uh, points that we can now come off of and do different things if we wanted to do with those. And if you notice, I made that into a straightened line. Well, now there's not as many little points to that because it's now a straight line. So you could really go into fine detail and shape or your curve or shape whatever be exactly what you want it to be. So that is super, super awesome. That's not something you can do on the machine. You have to do it on Canvas. So I always tell people, use Brother Canvas. I mean, if you really want to go into the detail and the nitty gritty of doing something, this is where you're now able to really expand your creativity and do however you want. So I really, really like that feature. I think it's really, really cool. Um, so that's something I kind of geek out about. If you look up here, you have different editing features for your path editing. So we clicked a little circle, a little node. We could add one. We could subtract one if we wanted to, to make this area have even more if we wanted to. So if I want to delete that node out, I don't want it. Or if I wanted to add another one, I can. So if I select one again, I can close the outline if I wanted to close it. So say there was a break in it for some reason, I could break it and make it an opening. So now, if you notice, there's a little opening right there. So if I'm like, no, I want to actually close that little one. Now I've closed it. And I decided that I wanted this to come out. Well, currently it's a straight one. But if I wanted to make it an option where it could be a curve, there we go, and now she's curved. If I was to select, now we've made a curved item instead of a straight one. It's gonna automatically do the nicest curve that it can. One last thing I really wanna show you because it's one of my favorite things is called fit to path. So say we brought in a shape like this heart and I, was bring, I brought in some text, say all brands. We're gonna type in all brands and I, of course, drag and select them both and come to edit, come down to fit to path. And now that all brands is on the outskirts of that heart, now we can use these features like the horizontal alignment. This allows us to put our letters exactly where we're wanting to on that heart, um, kind of position them on the outskirts of the heart where we want. Now we also have vertical alignment. Vertical alignment will allow us to put the letters if we want just on the outside or on the inside of the heart, or we want those letters to be exactly centered um, on the line of the heart. So they cut right through our letters. So it gives us that option to kind of put them, you know, staggered around where we want. You also have path direction. Path direction is going to ask or have you put where the top of those letters are touching the heart. So we could tell the path direction to put, hey, just on the outside of the heart or the path direction could make them where they're on the inside, but the top part is still touching the heart, which I think is something that uh, is kind of good to know your directional points of where it's going to touch. So path direction is going to allow you to select where you want it on the heart. So I always tell people click around on these deep, different ones. Um, that way you can kind of get a sense of, oh, okay, this one makes the letters jump here. This one makes the letters jump over there. Uh, you kind of get that option to do both. So path alignment, or sorry, path to edit is really, really cool. Again, those directional keys, that's when they come into play a lot. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed this, this overview of Canvas. It's so cool, but there's so much to learn. So we're definitely doing more videos with Canvas. I think Canvas is just really, really neat and gives you so many additional functions. The Scan and Cut already has so many things, but to have even more things that they give you free with that is just an awesome bonus. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Make sure you come back next week. We'll be having even more fun and doing some projects. Y'all have a good night. Bye.